Hi everyone, in this screencast I'm going to show you a live code of how I would build a modern website. This is not going to be production ready code, but, I'll, but I'm hoping to show you a lot of new techniques and strategies you can follow when building modern web, websites. So I'm going to start by building an app for, or like a very simple app for contacts. So I'm going to call it modern contacts. And inside this modern contacts, I just need an index.html and an app.javascript. I'll fire up Visual Studio Code, run a serve command, that's basically a wrapper around Ruby, which just opens like a local host. So we can now go to localhost, that's our app, and let's get started. So I'm gonna start with the boilerplate here, I'm not gonna change anything, and just give it a title, say contacts, and I'm gonna start by using the app shell pattern. And the idea behind the app shell pattern is that the, you, as soon as the app opens, you will start seeing some kind of content on the screen. Not content as in the list of the people, but more like the header, the sidebar. You, so you'll start seeing the user interface as soon as possible. And that's why the CSS for the app shell is actually inlined in the head, because you want it to load as soon as possible without going to the network. So I'm going to start with the header. I'm going to give it a background color from material. I like to use material colors, so let's pick this blue color here. And then inside of it, I'm going to have like an image or logo. And just to be fast, I'm going to use the material icons. Maybe there's a coal icon. Yeah, this one. I'm going to choose white. And I like it because you can actually download SVGs from it. So now I have this icon on my desktop. I can open it here, or I can simply drag it from my desktop and open it in the browser, that's it. You can't see it because it's white. Then if you view page source, that's the, CSS, that's the SVG code for it. So I'll copy it, let's go back here and I'll put it right in the header. Now, the reason why I inline this SVG is because it's always about the fold. And it's a good idea to inline it because we wanna avoid going to the network to get this SVG icon. But you probably don't wanna do that for bigger SVG icons that are um, maybe further down in the page. So let's see how it looks like. Yeah, that's it here. Um, now that's very typical, but we need to get rid of the margin of the body. So let's also do that here. So margin zero, and let's give it like a grayish background color. So maybe this one. Okay, that looks much better. And for the header, we can add like a padding of say 20 pixels, 30 pixels. Okay, let's see how it looks like on mobile because most modern websites are now mobile, mobile web apps. And this is how it looks like. Maybe you can make the logo a bit bigger. So I'll select this here and let's make it about say 36. Oops, 36, 36. Okay, that looks much better. And now let's get started with writing JavaScript. But before that, I'm just gonna make a div here with the contacts list. And this is where I'm gonna have contacts. And to keep it simple, I'm just gonna write loading. But later on, you will have something a bit more dynamic here. You can have like a spinner, a loader, or rotating SVG icon. So I'm just gonna add like a small padding for it. Say padding, 30 pixels. Okay, and that's it here. And now let's load the script. And to load the script, you'd use script src app.js. But the thing that I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna make this async. The reason why I'm gonna make it async is because I don't want the page to block rendering when it's loading the script. So I want this to be loaded in the background without blocking the page. So that will basically allow us to reach document ready as fast as possible without having to wait for the script to load. So that's exactly why inside app.js, I don't need to wrap my code inside document.event, uh, I mean document.ready wrapper, because this will only load after the document has finished rendering. And you're gonna see me writing ES 2015 code. That's why I told you this is not production ready. Ideally, you need to transpile it down to ES5 if you wanna have full browser support. But for now, I'm just gonna skip it. And I'm gonna start with tiny helper here with a dollar with a dollar variable. So I'm gonna 
alias it to a function that expects a selector I'm using arrow functions here and this is basically just a wrapper around query selector so take the selector from here and pass it down to the selector because this is an arrow function and I only have one line of code I can use implicit returns which allows me to remove the return and the curly braces so that's a nice and useful function um, let me show you how I can use it refresh here now if because most of us are used to jQuery I can use the same syntax context list and that's gonna find me the context list if I do body this is gonna find me the body of course you cannot do dot HTML those functions are coming from jQuery but you could do the native ones so dot inner HTML for example and that will give you the inner HTML okay I'll make also another one for dollar dollar and that will basically be query selector all so that's because if you've got multiple divs and if you use one dollar it's gonna return only the first one but if you use dollar dollar that's gonna return an array of the divs but I only have one here so so they kind of look the same if I add another one here test and refresh the first one's gonna return the first div and the second one's gonna return an array of those two so that's just like a typical helper that I have normally in my projects now let's get started and talk to an API so there's like a placeholder API which is json placeholder .type code. so this is great for testing and you could choose one of these three uh, these six or seven and I'm gonna use the users which returns a list of ten users so that sounds great so how do I talk with this how do I do an Ajax request normally people were using jQuery to do Ajax requests or maybe a few years after that people started using like Ajax only libraries but right now you don't really need any library because there's the fetch method that works across all browsers I'll tell you in a later video how you can deal with those browsers because you will still have users on those browsers but you don't want to always load a polyfill and penalize all of these happy users on modern browsers so let's not worry about browser support for now and use this the fetch, uh, the fetch method returns a promise so you have to resolve it with .then and this is where you get a response but this is not actually your data, this is more of a generic response. I will also have another video on fetch. So we need to convert this response into JSON. And then this also returns a promise and this is where you finally have your data. So now let's see how this looks like. Yeah, we've got our data here. So let's do, let's do some ES 2015 cool things here I can use an arrow function and once again because I only have one line I can use the implicit return like this and because I have only one argument I could also get rid of these two so suddenly this looks like a lot less boilerplate and makes much more sense so yeah still works and now inside of this you know this is a list of users so I can rename this to users and let's see what kind of information we're dealing with so I'm gonna loop over them and inside of it I get one user and I'm gonna see what kind of data do we have so let's pick a random one if we want to get the name because we're building a contacts app I could use the name here so let's do user.name and I want to update the DOM with the name for every person and it's not a good idea to do it inside the for each because I'll be updating the DOM at least 10 times so I'm gonna make a new variable here for a template which is empty and then for the template I'm gonna always add a div with a class card then I do interpolation inside of it close the div and that's it if you want to see how it looks like that's it template that's it here now we want to put this in the DOM so I can select the item which was contacts list and then dot inner HTML equals template so let's give it a shot refresh and that's it it works but you're not really able to see the loading it's barely showing up for a fraction of a second so what you normally should do you should go to the network tab click on no throttling and select regular 3G 
so you can barely see it because I'm on a very fast Wi-Fi and we're basically only loading, let me show you here, 1.3 kilobyte for the index, 600 bytes for the JavaScript, that's nothing, and 2 kilobytes from the network. So we're dealing with like small amounts of data and that's not really real life scenario. So that's why in that case, I would go down to GPRS because I really want to simulate a slow network. So let's refresh and that's it, it's working now. So let's one more time, remove all of these, refresh, and that's how you see the app shell, the loader, and then you see the content. And don't forget that for the loading, you will probably have a spinner. And now let's style these cards because they don't look really nice. I'm also gonna do it here just for convenience. You could do it inside a different CSS file. So I'll give it background color white, border radius, four pixels, just subtle border radius, some paddings, and a lot of margins, a lot of margin. So say M30, and let's see. Yeah, maybe a little less. So yeah, that's, uh, that's how it looks like. And in the next video, I'm gonna show you how you can reliably use Fetch without having to worry about browser support. So make sure to subscribe and I will see you soon. So stay tuned.